Welcome to Van Riper State Park. Van Riper State Park is located about halfway, not quite, between Marquette and the Keweenaw Peninsula, which are probably the two biggest areas that you might have actually heard of in the Upper Peninsula to describe where we are. The state park is located right off US 41 slash M28 on the shores of Lake Michigami and the Pesheki River. It's a little over a thousand acres and actually covers both sides of the highway with the campground and day use area being on one side and a huge section of trails and wildlife viewing area on the other. This has been a really nice park. We've stayed here a couple of nights because of our travel schedule. We were in the rustic campground one night and the modern campground tonight. Plenty of options for you to stay. There's about 147 sites in the modern campground, some with 50 amp, and there's another 40 sites in the rustic campground. Plus there's a couple of mini cabins on the modern campground side. There are two campgrounds at Van Riper State Park, a modern and a rustic. We stayed in the rustic last night because when we got here, we found ourselves in the middle of the fall harvest festival and the modern campground was booked. And I mean booked to the max with more people than are probably supposed to be in that campground, it seemed. Um, but the rustic campground was nice and peaceful and it was only half full, so it was easy to find a spot back in here. It really was half full when we got here last night. It's almost empty this morning. We slept in and may have missed some sort of evacuation order. I don't know where everybody is, but they all bugged out really early. Like there's us and two other campers left. I, I don't know where everybody went. Super quiet back here right now. Uh, but this was nice. It's a nice rustic campground. Um, plenty of spots are on the outer loop and they're good size tucked into the trees, so it's really kind of peaceful in there. The center of the campground that's behind us, um, it's more open and the spots seem a little closer together, but you know, it seemed relatively quiet in here last night. Even with other people in here, it didn't seem too packed. So when we arrived, the park ranger at the front desk gave us a map and a list of the vacant sites and said we could go check it out, pick one we liked. And that was really nice because that allowed us to see whether they were level or there were too many trees or who we were gonna be camped next to. And, and so we got a good feel for what this park was like. And I think that, yeah, they were relatively nice sites. Everybody kind of had their own space. And there were some groups having some laughter and hilarities around the campfire last night, but that's what this is designed for. And I think that everybody had a good time back here. Even the modern campground, even though it was full and to the gills, <laughs> it was packed. Um, the sites are really good size yeah. here at Van Riper on the modern side. And because it was Harvest Festival, a lot of people a lot of people had Halloween decorations and things up throughout their site. And between the, the trailers and their vehicles and the Halloween setups and everything, they still had plenty of room. It seems like Van Riper, like you almost have a site and a half compared to other state parks. They're really good size because even though it was full, there was plenty of room between sites for people to have yeah. activities and set things up. And it just didn't feel cry. It didn't feel crowded because you were on top of each other. It felt crowded because there were a lot of people in for the harvest festival. If you do come to stay here, look at the map because there are some narrower sites. There are some larger sites. There's a handful of pull through sites and some good sized corner sites. There is 50 amp in a few of the sites as well. So look for that. Um, but just check it out. I do think it was a little bit overwhelming simply because of the Harvest Fest and everything going on. But at the same time, that was really cool. Many of the parks are starting to do that because they were trying to draw campers past the Labor Day season, getting them to come out here during the fall. And so you'll see the Harvest Fest crop up in a number of the different state parks, both Upper and Lower Peninsula. And in fact, here at Van Riper, it appears that the first three weekends of September, they run off our Harvest Fest. I think it's that popular. And this is, the people at Van Riper take it seriously. Oh like gosh. We saw some amazing displays on camp sites last night that would rival what people would do in their houses. So oh, I'm pretty sure our neighborhood could take some suggestions from these people because yeah, our people at home don't decorate at all. And, and these were fantastic. I mean, full setups with like little mini haunted houses under canopies. And some even had like the full inflatables of all sorts of different cartoon characters. There's a lot of different skeleton setups with skeletons in varying poses and costumes. And yeah, these people go all out. I think this would be worth coming to. 
Harvest Fest is a newer thing that DNR has been doing the last few years, and it's really starting to take off. It happens in September and October, right before they shut things down at some of the parks. So keep that in mind. If it's something that you're not interested in, it's going to be busier. The kids are going to be running around. Uh, it's going to be fun, though, if you have families or if you just like seeing the kids enjoying the, the displays and having fun putting out the displays. One of the ladies that had one of the larger displays last night, I credited her for all the work she put into it. And she's like, no, it's not work. It's a lot of fun. She really enjoys doing it. So check in with a park if you're going to be in September, October, see if you're there for that. Uh, we've been to some of the parks where the local community will actually come into the state park during Harvest Fest and they let their kids do the trick-or-treating <laughs> instead of going through town. So that's kind of a neat thing too to, to interact with the local kids. I guess it's one of those where if you want to come for Fall Fest or Harvest Fest, whichever it's called, do it. But if you don't, this would not be the place to come. If you're looking for peace and quiet, stargazing, bird watching, um, maybe you'd want to go down the road to one of the other parks. But uh, make sure you check that out because I actually really enjoyed walking through last night. Halloween is one of my favorites. It was well worth us accidentally arriving here last night, so we got to be part of that. Yeah, for you, it put um, <laughs> your love of, of camping and the outdoors and Halloween all in one. So, bonus. <laughs> We've heard people talk about Van Riper State Park being fun for families, either for camping or just day use, and I can see why. The day use area here is quite large. There's a huge parking lot, plus you've got the beach and the lake. The playground, a bike pump track, picnic tables, grills. It's just a general good place to hang out, I think. Yeah, this is nice. The beach is good size. It's an inland lake. Uh, they did a really fancy playscape here that's going to be behind us in a second with crushed rubber for kids to fall on and not get hurt. Oh! <laughs> not as young as you used to be, eh? Uh, yeah, this rubber stuff is kind of weird. It's all like a crushed rubber? Yeah, it's like recycled shredded rubber, which is kind of cool to say it's recycled. It's just interesting. Nice and soft breaks the fall uh but there's also some swing sets on the beach and i don't know this just seems like a really fun weekend to hang out with your family <laughs> yeah and they said the water here in the summer can be quite warm and i don't know if that's relatively speaking because the up is probably a little bit colder but uh, they said it is a nice lake to go swimming in it's a good place to take out a kayak or a canoe or even a boat and sort of tool around the lake so this is lake michigami and it is one of the larger lakes in the upper peninsula We've been up here long enough now, we talk about UP close. Is UP warm a thing too? I think UP warm is also a thing. But yeah, definitely a place to check out uh, either a camp or just come out for the day if you're here. Like I said, just a, a real fun place to hang out and spend time with family and friends. There's a few different options for hiking across the road uh, with about four miles totals of trails with a few different trailheads that you can start on depending how long of a hike you want to go. There's also an organizational campground here and you can park there and hit one of the trailheads. So it's only about a mile and a half to two mile hike to this really gorgeous overlook of the trees and the river, especially in the fall when the colors are starting to turn. There's also, you can pick up the trailhead right from the state park, and that would be a much longer, probably four mile loop, or you can even go further down the road and you're gonna have to ask for the park rangers um, directions for that one, but you get to a little wooden bridge and from there it's maybe a mile to get to the overlook section. So again, kind of depending on how far you wanna hike, but still get to the same views, there's a couple different areas to start from. We hiked the Overlook Trail that we got to leaving the organizational campground. The ranger mentioned to us that there was no one using it, so we were free to park anywhere there, which was really nice because there's plenty of room. It was nice. I, you know, some elevations we had to deal with. There's a little bit of climbing, but I guess when you're going on an Overlook Trail, you have to assume that you're going to be climbing at some point. And um, it is the Upper Peninsula, so you will be climbing rocks and roots and all those things. Yeah, but it was it was really nice. Um, kind of narrow in parts. You kind of, you know, were beating around in the bush a little bit to get through some of the spots. But I mean, it was it was really nice to to get out there and see that. He has little faith in my trail navigating skills, mostly because I tend to not follow the path or I follow the path less traveled. But in this case, we did just find some stairs. So I'm going to assume that this is the right path because that is the river and that's where we started. This is a path that will take us out to a trailhead. I agree. The question is, will it take us to the trailhead that we started at? 
We shall see. You really wanted to see moose. The the ranger said there are moose in this area, although he generally sees them on M28 when he's driving to work in the morning, <laughs> more so than if anybody's out hiking on the trail. So maybe drive up and down M28 early in the morning and you might see a moose. <laughs> but it was a really nice hike. When we hit the overlook, there are a couple different spots. Actually, you can get up high enough, you do an overlook. And uh, we saw a number of birds of prey. We weren't sure if they were hawks or eagles, but they were some good sized birds flying around up there. And that was kind of neat to see them doing that. And so I really enjoyed that hike and you ought to check it out. From what we understand, Van Riper State Park is busy all the time. We were here during the Harvest Festival, which is one of three weekends they run the festival because it is so popular and they fill out the camp all three weekends. Uh, there's even a couple families that are staying here the pretty much the entire time. You're allowed to stay up to 15 days and it seems like they have booked at least eight or nine of them to stay and leave their camper here through the, at least the first two weekends of that because their kids love it so much. So get your reservations in early. This is one that you probably, if you wanna come for festival weekend, you'd need to book your six months in advance. But I think just even in the summer too, because of the bike track and the swimming and the hiking and some of the other things going on in the area that you can drive to easily, this would be a park that would be full and busy and just very popular all year round, or at least when the park is open. <laughs> it seems like a really nice park. It seems like there's a lot to do here as a family. Uh, together, there's places to send your kids to be alone uh, and have some fun <laughs> while you have some downtime. So it seems like a really nice park. This is one I'd put on the list to visit. Maybe not when it's full. <laughs> Um, because it's not necessarily my style of camping, but if you have a family and you want to get kids here and have them run around with the kids, I think this would be a great spot to come. My impression is this is a great family park all summer long and the early fall, uh, but a great couples park during the weeks when the families are in school in the fall, right as it's turning color season. Uh, that seems to be most of the people that are here tonight with us, and you're going to get the most peace and quiet from that and enjoy a great sunset over Lake Michigami. Either way, choose a type of camping that works for you. Keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there. There are two campgrounds at, sorry, where are we at? Van, Van Riper, Riper State Park. Park. <laughs> sorry, we were just doing Craig like. That'll be on the blooper. <laughs> have we been to too many state parks this year? I don't know where I'm at anymore. We may have been.